Welcome to Career Insights. The Career Insights series features local industry professionals engaged in conversation with students and recent graduates about career planning and job opportunities in Polk County, Florida. Welcome to Career Insights. Today's segment is focusing on the civil engineering industry. My name is Reba Coyle and I am the Workforce Education, Business and Community Liaison for Polk County Public Schools. Joining us today is Gordon Green, the Executive Vice President of Patel Green & Associates, Joseph Locke, the Roadway Group Manager for Patel Green & Associates, and Ainsley Allen, a 2020 Bartow High School ACE Academy graduate. Now let's jump right into our conversation. One other question I had is what, because I don't even know this, what does a typical day look like for you all? Or do you have a typical day? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, no, I guess the answer is no, we don't have a typical day, uh, not anymore anyway. Um, I think for Joe and I, our, our days can be a mix of a lot of different things. Uh, we, we do still get to, to be technical. Um, it's a lot of times more on the uh, reviewing some plans or report and providing comments back. Um, but we do, Joe, we do still get to, to write some of our own stuff and come up with our own designs, so, uh, which is fun for us. Um, but we also uh, have a marketing side to what we do. So the projects just don't come to us. We have to go get them. Uh, and there's a whole process uh, for that that takes a lot of time and effort. Um, thankfully, we're, we're pretty good at it. Um, so we stay pretty busy, but it, but it does take some time. So uh, Joe and I and, and several others are, are responsible for uh, a lot of that. Uh, and then um, there's there's a business to manage as well. So there's um, a, a good part of our day might be spent on, um, you know, talking to folks that report to us that have problems that we need to help them with or financial stuff that we have to do to kind of make sure that uh, the business is running properly. So it's a pretty good mix. Some, some days we'll spend all our day on one of those things. And some days it's just a, a mix of all of them all together. Um, and tell us about your high school. What classes did you take to kind of get you ready? In high school, I took a uh, drafting class and I took uh, Mr. Dawes' construction class. And I also took the engineering class when we had that too. And I was part of the ACE mentor program, which is architecture, construction, construction engineering, mm -hmm. and got scholarships through them. So can you, two things I want to add to that. One, you need to tell about your scholarship because this is big. Tell what you just won. Well, uh, I won the, I won a $20,000 scholarship with the ACE National. Yeah. So that, I mean, how many, out of how many, Ainsley? Uh, it was a lot. <laughs> that is incredible. So she gets to put that 20,000, which paying college tuition right now, that will get her through a quite a few years at Florida, maybe one half, maybe <laughs> one and a half, but that is great, Ainsley. And that will look great on a, a resume to come in the future, so congratulations. So talking about internships, um, one thing that has been a kind of a hot topic lately with employers is the soft skills, the employability skills that they're looking for in employees. What do you all look for in an employee coming in, young, doesn't have much work experience, what are the key things you're looking for in an employee? You might and that could be for Joe or Gordon. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we, and just to give you some background perspective, we do, we do annual reviews or mid-year and annual reviews. Uh, and yeah, I, I just noticed it because we went through it uh, internally very recently. And the, the categories that we, um, you know, quote grade folks on, seven out of the nine are soft skills. Mm -hmm. So to be a good engineer, to be a good employee, um, you really, really have to focus on those soft skills. And it's things like communication, uh, having a good attitude. Uh, it's not necessarily, it, it's not always just about the technical side of things. If you can interact with folks, communicate well, be a team player, you're going to get really, really far. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Absolutely. knowing what you're doing and applying that goes a long way. 
but if you can't interact and you can't communicate and you don't come up or show up on time, uh, if you don't give it your all, you're not going to go far in your career. You know, where do you start off when you're a civil engineer coming right out of college? You know, where's the price point that they start off? Um, what's the movement? And you've talked a little bit about that, Gordon, but you know, how, where is the starting point for them, the entry level? Do you remember that right offhand, Joe? I, I know what we do, and we recently had to adjust it just to kind of keep up with what's going on out there. But we do have we have a, a, a salary. We start kids that are coming out with no experience, mm -hmm. and then we have one for those that have interned through college. Now I don't know that all companies do that, but we mm -hmm. do that because there's a lot of value in someone that has worked their way through school and at least learned CAD. They've learned the like the basic standards. They learn how to work in an office with other people. Um, if we've got that day one, we're definitely willing to pay more. It's mm -hmm. not eighty thousand though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no. The other thing too to to note, um, you know, when I when I exited college, it was right at the peak of um, the market, right before the great recession. Mm -hmm. um, so salaries were really high uh, because there was such a demand. There was a lot of, um, a lot of work. And when the, the recession occurred, it wasn't as though um, salaries went down, salaries went down, but work went away. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there's a gap. And we see it even internally when we try to hire folks that there's a, a gap of engineers out there mm -hmm. uh, between the um, 10 to 15 year range that, that just don't exist because there, there was no hiring. Um, some industries are more stable than others. Uh, land development obviously has its peaks and valleys. Um, so a lot of that has impacts on, on what starting salaries are depending on when you come out of school and if, if they're in a really high peak, you might get a lot of money. Uh, but if mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're unfortunately down at the bottom, job, job market might be a little bit tough uh, and, and salaries might be a little bit lower. So, um, you know, like I said, some industries are a little bit more um, uh, consistent. Some others might, might have those, those variations within them. Uh, but like Gordon said, we, we try to be uh, consistent with the market. Uh, obviously, it's something that we always look at um, a year by year, even six months, because we, we have to keep up with, with right. being competitive. I like the, the point that, Gordon, I think you made the, about the two, having the experience or having not, no experience, that really, for all students, they should think about that. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a selling point for any employer, I would think, is if you've got some experience coming out of high school or college, you probably are a leg up on the interview and resume standard. What's some of the most challenging issues you've had in a project and how have you overcome that? Uh, I thought of one from early on in my career. I, I did go work in uh, Tampa for, I guess, a few years right out of college um, because I wanted to learn drainage. So I'd worked in Bartow through college, you know, even when I started to commute to USF in Tampa, I would still come back to Bartow and work. Um, but it was mainly roadway stuff. I was learning CAD and I was doing roadway design. Um, but I'd gotten a taste of the drainage and I, and I wanted to round myself out a little bit, at least between roadway and drainage. And they didn't, we didn't really have any of that in Bartow. So I knew I needed to go to Tampa. Got assigned pretty quickly to, uh, I don't know if you make your way to Tampa very much, but um, I know you know I-4. And there's uh, the Selman Expressway where they were building a connector, a big connector mm -hmm. that connected those two. It was humongous projects. And they um, kind of put me in charge of the drainage design for a, a good chunk of that, which I was fine with because um, I really, you know, I, I thought I knew what I was doing. Um, so I, I, that, that I embraced. Um, but what I didn't, the challenge came, uh, what I didn't expect. I mean, obviously, I could get a lot of work done. Um, but I couldn't get all that work done. I needed help. And um, they assigned me a couple uh, younger engineers to help me. And uh, it was, I, ha I really had to work through how to lead people. Um, and, and I wasn't good at it when I started. And I really had, I really used that experience um, to improve my skills on guiding and mentoring and helping and coordinating 
and training folks that don't know what they're doing yet, mm -hmm. being patient with them um, and, and, and realizing that I needed them to get the job done. So it, so I really needed to help them. And, and like I said, I wasn't very good at it at the beginning of that, but by the end of that project, I feel like I was, I was better at it anyway. <laughs> What other positions do you have that students may not think about, you know, think for an engineering firm? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so maybe PGA is a little unique in that we've all, we've never hesitated to bring on the non-technical staff if it helps the company be better. Our very first hire, uh, besides me and hiring my partner, was an office manager. And we each handed them a shoebox full of receipts or handed her and, and put her to work. Um, Cause we knew we needed that part of it, the invoicing, the stuff like it didn't make any sense for me and hiring to be doing that. We needed to go win work and do work. We didn't need to be categorizing the receipts and doing stuff like that. So we hired that position very early on. Uh, at this point we've got, I think four admin folks. We have a, a financial controller. Uh, we've got an HR director um, and we've got a, another contract specialist. And then we have, um, but an admin assistant here in Bartow. Um, we have a marketing group. So we have a director of marketing that, that helps lead and organize and coordinate all those pursuits. And um, there's a lot that goes into that. And then she has a, uh, she has three folks working for her, uh, uh, a social media specialist, because we do a lot of social media. You should mm -hmm. follow. Um, uh, another, I forget what Devin's title is, but, um, he helps. He's a specialist. Yeah. Yeah. So he does a lot of the uh, proposal. He he's proposal support big time. Mm -hmm. um, and then our most recent hire is a graphic designer. So between the social media and the proposal booklets and all that stuff, I mean, we have a big need for graphic design. And so um, he's he's really really good. And so we're we're glad to finally have him. We have an IT director who helps keep all. We got a whole bunch of technology over here. Um, and so we finally have someone, we were doing it, we uh, had a consultant helping us um, this whole time until I guess about a year ago when we hired Matt. Um, and so now we have someone in house that, that manages and coordinates all that. Um, so I'm glad that you, we mentioned that because some students watching this may go, I'm not in the engineering field, but I'm great at marketing and you know, so go out there, you don't have to just go to a marketing committee, you can go pretty much anywhere and probably do that now, especially with social media. Um, just, to, just to add real quick to that, um, I, I know, you know we talk about engineers, but we, we, we rely heavily on, on our, our technicians as well. Mm -hmm. So folks that might not um, you know, have the aspiration to, to be a, a, uh, an engineer, but are interested in, in CAD design uh, and, and uh, technical support and things of that nature, you know, we've we've got a whole staff of of technicians that uh, have been in this industry for almost decades uh, now, um, and and they they are uh, you know the, the true drivers of some of our projects, uh, helping us get those to the end. Uh, we also have an environmental side, uh, folks that uh, have um, you know, focus of biology. So, do you have any last minute words of wisdom to those trying to go out into the engineering field? Uh, I'll, I'll start, Joe, and I know you'll have something good too, but um, I, thinking back on some of, I think we talked about advice you'd give um, someone, like what, what would you tell them? And uh, I think only because this is what, this way I've always and still do uh, live my life is, uh, and I think why PGA has been successful is find what nobody else wants to do, especially when you enter uh, even team projects in school, um, but especially when you get into the into into work into a company, when there's something that nobody else wants to do but it needs to get done, do it. Volunteer yourself immediately to do it. Find out what is on your boss's plate that you can do, and take it off their plate, and 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 do a great job with it. Um, and then don't be afraid to work extra hours, especially when you're young and, and learning, because uh, that extra time that you spend while you're going through school as much as you can, and then as you enter, um, pour yourself into it, especially if you got a passion for it, because then it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I tell my wife all the time, I could spend 100 hours a week on this stuff, but there are other things in my life that, that I have, you know, I'm responsible for. 
Um, I just, I just enjoy it that much. Um, but, but pour yourself into it, work extra. Um, and that will, that will build your skills that much faster and accelerate your career that much faster. And like I said, if you're at a good company, um, PGA is not the only one. There's lots of good companies out there, but I know the way PGA operates is I don't care how long you've been here. If you've got the skills and the work ethic and, and you've mm-hmm. proven yourself and you can do that through that, that hard work, you'll, you'll get the promotions. You'll, you'll get moved up and get the opportunities that you're looking for faster. So I think that's what we've seen a lot, Joe, right? Is, is, I don't know if it's just these days or maybe it's always been that way and I didn't notice, but um, folks want the opportunities, which is understandable, but sometimes the work isn't wanting, they don't want to put the work in to earn the opportunity. So don't make that mistake. Put the work in, earn that opportunity. And if you get, if you get yourself in a good place where folks will recognize hard work, um, you'll earn those opportunities and you'll get them. To my advice, learn to write. Um, we, we do a lot of report writing. So anything that we do, we, we need to justify. Uh, and we either document through, through technical um, documentation um, or you know, whatever it might be, but we have to write and we have to convey our message in a clear and concise manner. Uh, that, that can justify the, the purpose for what we're doing. Uh, and that, uh, Gordon, Gordon said it time and time again, it's a lost art. Uh, <laughs> we, we start reading some of the, uh, the documents that we get in, and it's like, whoa, uh, we, we gotta go back to step one. Um, so, so take every opportunity you can. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, report writing that you'll, you'll do through school, but uh, you know, take that constructive criticism uh, learn from it uh, and, and take the opportunities that are given to you um, and, and take advantage of those. We appreciate you, Gordon and, and Joe, being on and Ainsley, good luck at Florida and know that PGA is always around when you want to come and maybe intern. Thank you all so much. <laughs>